How old are you? Two. Two. You're two. That's right. And what's what's her name? Bobby. That's right. It's Bo mommy, but you say Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. Bobby. And what's my name? Daddy. Daddy. What color is this? Car. Like, yeah. What color is the car? What color? Blue. It's blue. Let's see. What what color is this? Copter. It is a copter. What? It's a helicopter. What color is it? Sky. What color? It, it uh, flies. It flies high. <laughs> what color is that helicopter? Red. Red. It is red. Here, you oh, want to give mommy the helicopter? Okay. On. What's this one? Pickup. It's a pickup. What color is the pickup? Green. 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 All right. Which one do you want to get? Okay. You want me to hold this one? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll hold this one. <laughs> Wait, what did you just do? <laughs> I hope you didn't. <laughs> Thank you. Now that's it, Michael. Mommy has it. Oh, what's this? Plane. The plane. plane. Whoa. <laughs> it flies high, doesn't it? What color is it? What color is the Whoa. plane? Blue. It is blue. What's this? Blue. Hey, Michael, what's this right here? Jeep. It's a Jeep. What color and is that Jeep? It, you ride the Jeep. What color is that Jeep? Daddy. Oh, is Daddy going to get a Jeep? And Bobby. And, and, and Mommy. What color is the Jeep? I think. Yellow. Yellow, yes. Okay, you didn't poop, but boy, it smells like it. Okay. <laughs> what's this, what's this, dirt. Michael? Yes, that, that shovel's dirt. That's a dirt digger. And All right, Michael, why don't, we, why don't we say a prayer? Do you want us to pray? Okay. Okay, let's pray. You ready? You want ready? Ready? You want to pray? Close. Put your no. hands. You no. don't want to pray? Okay. Oh, are you, are you one to go not not? Do you want me to hold you like a baby? What else do you want to do with him? Michael, what did you learn to say today? Ice baby. Ice baby. <laughs> you want down? Okay. What what kind of car does Daddy drive? Pickup. A pickup. Michael, let's do the. What happens if you go pee pee in the potty? What do you do? No pee pee. Yeah, you pee pee. Yeah, Come over pee -pee. here. Come over here. Do, what happens when you go pee pee in the potty? Do the do the potty dance. Potty dance. Potty, potty dance. dance. Woohoo! All right. Yay! Yeah. Oh yeah. And then you fall down. One, two, one, two, two. Okay. <laughs> this is all part of the potty dance. Michael, what happens when you disobey? What happens when you disobey? Um, oh, did you get spanked, spanked? It hurts. Hurts. It hurts. Yeah, disobedience hurts, doesn't it? Do you get do you do you get spankings very often? Jake. Yeah, they hurt, don't they? It hurts. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. Now, what happens if you get a boo boo? What do we do with a boo boo? See, Daddy got. Daddy hurt his hand. What do you do? Make it feel better. Oh, Thank you. That's so sweet. Can I have a hug and a kiss, not not? Okay. <laughs> Can I have a better hug and a kiss? A baby. All right, Michael. So you're you're finally two. And one of the things that uh, I am very proud of is I taught you to walk. And so this is probably not going to be the first time your dad pushes you to go do something but I had so much fun kind of holding you up and holding your hands and helping you take those first few steps and you loved the attention you loved just me cheering and laughing and clapping and going crazy for you and sure enough it didn't take too long at all for you to start walking and taking those first uh, few steps and we waited forever to buy you shoes by the way 
And so your mom wants to talk about your shoes. Yeah, so we did, we waited forever to buy you your first pair of shoes and um, to the point where people I didn't know were telling me that you needed a pair of shoes. Thank you very much. Um, and your dad was very particular about your shoes. And the day mm -hmm. that they, <laughs> the day that they came in, um, you put on your shoes and we were outside and um, you started walking like some kind of, like a cat on fly paper. It was so funny. And it was the first time that you would walk in the grass because you realized that, hey, I get a lot, a lot more, um, I can cover a lot more area um, with these little shoes on. So that was really cute, but well, it was 16 of, months old. Yeah, I was gonna say part of it was, Michael, you hated like grass, to step on grass or to step on sand. You were very, very That's sensitive awesome. about those things. Um, and you know, I wanted you to be barefoot just as long as possible because I just figured that was better for you than, you know, strapping a pair of big clunky shoes on your feet. And so you were, you were barefoot forever. Yep. Um, our first vacation, we went to the beach and uh, we went to Myrtle Beach and we were there for 10 days uh, while your dad was, was there on business and um, you hated the ocean. <laughs> oh we were right on the beach and you hated it. So we haven't been, we, I would take you every single morning to the beach and then your dad would take you in the evenings, I think, to the beach trying to, you know, to hoping that you would warm up to it mm -hmm. and, and well, you never did. What you loved about vacation was hiding in the cabinets because we stayed, where we stayed, there was nothing in the cabinets and um, there was no little knickknacks or anything around. And so you spent your time just running into, you know, hiding in the vanities and hiding in the kitchen cabinets and hiding in the, in just different shelving. So that's I know. what you liked. So my lesson was instead of paying for a condo on the <laughs> beach, I could have just gotten a pair of old cabinets from Lowe's or something for like 150 bucks and you would have had just as much fun. Yeah, mommy wouldn't. Okay, so, um, <laughs> One thing I learned is that um, every morning we need to go someplace where you can run wide open spaces. So we joined the, um, we got a membership at the aquarium because I could just let you loose and you wouldn't break anything. And so we, you did a lot of running at the, at the aquarium. Oh, when we got back home from the, um, from vacation, I was trying to unpack and get things washed and, and put away and you saw an empty dog crate. And so, and I told you, I said, Michael, do not get in the dog crate. And, um, and I started doing whatever I was doing. And then I heard you cry out and I looked down <laughs> and you had, you had gone into the dog crate and you were so angry. And then you got even more angry because you, you couldn't stuck. get out, you got stuck. But you got so angry at me because I wouldn't get you out. Instead, I did the, did the right thing by calling your dad and we stood there and laughed at you and took a picture of it. It was hilarious. You didn't find it funny, but we found it hilarious. You kept crawling into those dog crates though. It wasn't just like one time. It was like repeatedly you were crawling into the crates and we kept, I get you and I try to pull you out and you start to get stuck and all this other kind of stuff. And then, then that was like the last time and you, you got stuck real good. Yeah, you did. So we shared the picture with our friends on uh, Facebook and got a lot of comments. And then Facebook took it off because I guess they thought it was child abuse. Child abuse. It wasn't. Okay, so um, biscuits. You love helping me <coughs> make biscuits and you like biscuit dough, which I'm really happy about because um, I like biscuit dough too, as you know. And um, anytime that I'm in the kitchen cooking, or um, maybe not anytime, but m a lot of times you wanna come watch or you want to, um, you come help me. So you take the bench and you move the bench over in front of the kitchen cabinets and you help me with dinner. So I'm hoping that that continues. Um, the other thing, oh, so you you fell and scraped your knee twice in like a three day period of time. Oh yeah. And so all that you wanted to do to every person who came up to you was talk about your boo boo, and that included uh, random people in the Target parking lot, people at church, people at the aquarium, 
everywhere we went, you talked about your boo-boo to the point, this went on every single day, several times a day for- Weeks. It was about three weeks. And I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I should have, have it checked out. So I decided to take you to the chiropractor because I thought, well, you know, they can, they can look at the bone. And anyway, long story short, um, turns out that <laughs> your, um, you had one leg about an inch longer than the other leg. And um, so your hips were out of alignment and so they fixed you. And so that kind of quieted things down for a little bit. And then once, you're, once you couldn't figure out which knee was the boo-boo, you kind of were satisfied with, with that. And didn't talk about it anymore. You want to talk about some other stuff? I don't know. You kind of seem like on a roll, just hopping from one to another real fast. I am. I am getting through the list. I will say this. I do see a very sensitive heart in you that I'm really proud about. And um, you just seem to be very sensitive to other people's hurts and, their, um, and when they're sad. And I hope that that tenderness continues. I'm done. You're completely done with everything? I got I got through the list. You're not going to talk about Bobby or Score? Oh, yeah. You do call me Bobby. Because you can't say Mommy. You can't say it Mommy. comes off as Bobby. So you call me Bobby. Um, and then, uh, oh, you need to talk about that. And that's all. Um, so, Michael, I taught you to, uh, every time you pass gas, to say Score. And so now, all of a sudden, uh, you'll just go, Score! <laughs> And uh, your mom just rolls her eyes. Well, I do because um, originally I had taught you to say, excuse me, excuse me. And that was just really, really cute until, Not nearly until, as cute as score. <laughs> until your dad trumped me. I know. That's okay. We made a bargain and I won't, we won't, I won't tell you about it anyway. So, um, the... The first scare that we really had with you, Michael, uh, was this year, and it was uh, really close to your, your birthday. Um, you, you got a fever, and I didn't think much of it, <clears throat> but uh, during the day it just kind of persisted, and we were trying a couple of things to kind of lower your fever, and um, one was uh, put you in the bath, and while you were in the bath, and um, you had a seizure, a small little seizure where you just kind of like, it almost looks like you got the chills and you just kind of go like this and then you kind of just pass out for a second. And, um, and it really made us nervous. And then, um, he, fa he face planted in the water. Oh yeah. You face planted it. Um, and yeah, I, I was, I tried to catch you and, and everything. And, um, and then later, uh, like maybe an hour later, um, I had just gotten some medicine, uh, to give you and, you had another seizure, except this time it was over three minutes long. And uh, what was the type of seizure? A febrile seizure. Mm -hmm. um, we later learned that it's called a febrile seizure, and a febrile seizure is pretty common. Uh, about 3% of kids have it um, between six months and six years or eight years. I can't remember. Something like that. And uh, it's not a normal seizure where you know there's convulsions. Um, it's a seizure where you just kind of like lose control of your body and just go limp. Uh, but it scared us to death. And so your mom is, is holding you saying, Josh, what is he doing? What is he doing? What, what does his eyes look like? And I'm, I'm trying to explain. I'm trying to even figure out what's going on. And, um, and then she said, that's it. We're going to the hospital right now. And you got to remember, this was at night. And she was in her pajamas. No shoes, no makeup, nothing. She runs to the door. I'm holding you, at which point you wake up and proceed to throw up all over my shirt. And I'm telling your mom, I said, LaShawn, go get some shoes on and get me another shirt. <laughs> and she's, she's upset because I'm telling her to get me another shirt and get some shoes on. She's like, we don't have time. And I'm like, we do. And uh, on the way to the hospital, we decided to stop at an, another place, which was a 24-hour uh, emergency doctor facility. And uh, they went back and, and saw you and uh, did a battery of tests and kind of find out you just had the flu. Uh, wasn't it the flu mm -hmm. and and all of that but there is no way to put into words how scary that was that was the first time where we thought oh my goodness something could be wrong with him you know he's hurting and we couldn't take it away we couldn't stop it 
Um, it was so awesome. My mom, uh, your nana, met us at the doctor's office. So as we were leaving the doctor, she was actually in the waiting room waiting for us just to be there to um, kind of comfort us and, and see if we needed anything. Um, but it was a time where we were had a lot of prayers, and your mom looked very silly in her pajamas. I think I have a picture of that. Let's hope not. <laughs> and everything. Um, I'll tell you something funny you do. Uh, when you get upset, you'll put <laughs> yourself in timeout. We don't. We haven't used timeout much yet. But you'll get upset, and you'll take a chair that we use for timeout. You'll turn it around, and you'll face the wall, and then you'll sit down. And then when you calm down and you stop crying, you'll say, kind of, all done, all done. And do your little, all done. And then I'll say, Michael, are you all done? And you'll say, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, and do the little sorry sign. And then you'll, you're, all, you're all happy. Yeah, the, uh, one of the things that we're really trying to teach you is that when you say sorry, <coughs> you look the person in the eyes. And <laughs> so it cracks other people up because anytime they've seen you say sorry lately, you, and, and you're, I have to remind you, you know, look mommy in the eyes, you get right up to my forehead, so you're touching my forehead, and you look at me like this, sar, sar, sar. But, um, you know, that's just something that we've intentionally tried to, to work on, and you're getting better at it. This year was also the first year that we kind of started to spank you, uh, which is very, very difficult. And um, one of the things, your mom was the one who did this, but disobedience hurts. We want you to learn, Michael, that disobedience hurts. And, you know, right now, while you're a, a child, a, a small child, even a baby, you know, disobedience hurts physically. But later on in life, Michael, disobedience will hurt in ways that are far, far worse than a spanking. And we want you to learn that obedience equals blessings. And God has so many blessings in store for you as you obey Him, and, and as you disobey God, th there is pain in th that follows that. So we want you to learn to obey God. Something that I want you to know is, I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I love you. I also want you to know that I love God. I never want you to question those two things. And my prayer for you, every night as I put you to bed, because um, I'm usually the one that puts you to bed, I'm, I'm holding you and uh, you'll put your head on my shoulder and you'll say song, song, and so I'll sing you a song. And then you'll say pray, pray, and I'll, I'll pray for you. And I pray, Michael, that you will love Jesus. I pray that he will own your heart and that you will be a man of God. There is nothing in the world that matters more than that. There is nothing in the world that can even come close to comparing to that. And, and Michael, that, that desire for God never goes away. That, that seeking after God never goes away. And in fact, this year, God is, has been convicting me of uh, just a lack of discipline in my life where I've, I've been seeking after comfort. I want to be comfortable. Um, I say things like, I deserve that. Like, I deserve extra dessert. I deserve to watch more TV. I deserve to to rest. I deserve this. And it's like, God's telling me, no, Josh, you don't. And and instead of seeking comfort, I want to seek discipline. Um, and I want to sacrifice myself to God so that, so that I may come to know Him more. And, and these things, Michael, affect all aspects of your life. They affect how I am towards your mother. They affect how I am towards you. They affect the decisions I make in my business. And, um, and I want to always show you both the successes and failures because as your dad, I certainly don't have it all figured out. Uh, you'll certainly learn that probably <laughs> in your teenage years. Uh, but the one thing that I want you to know is that I love. I love you and I love God. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, and the only, the only thing I would... Um add to that, you know, other than I just I echo everything that your dad just said. You know, two days ago, um, you know, we were driving somewhere in the car and I said, um, uh, just a praise and worship song came on and, and, um, and you 
you know, you and I, we, we talk about Jesus. We talk about God. And for the first time, I heard you say Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it made me think, um, one, just how, how beautiful that sounded to hear you say Jesus. But the other thing is that it just caused me to think, you know, how grateful I am that that um, someone in 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 my in in our ancestry um, said yes to Jesus, and because and for 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 me, it's definitely got to be your daddy Jim um, said yes to Jesus when his family didn't say yes to Jesus, but because of that. Um, I know Jesus, and you will be introduced to Jesus, and we pray that you will make a choice to follow Christ in in all that you do. And that is our prayer for you every single day, that you will follow Christ, that you will know the name of Jesus um, in your heart and in your spirit, in your choices, in what you think about, and that one day, if, if you have a family of your own, that your children and your wife will have a stronger relationship with Jesus because you chose to follow Him. But never doubt that we love you, and that love will never, ever, ever fade. And like your dad said, we love Jesus, and I love Jesus, and I love your dad. And those are things that you can be confident in. Um, one of the things that uh, like your mom already mentioned, but something that I'm noticing in you and that she's noticed is is that sensitive spirit. Michael, you seem to connect with people even at two on, on an emotional level. Um, you You understand when I get hurt. You know, I burned my hand the other day, and and you 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 come up and you kiss it because that's what we do with you. Um, uh, you were eating dinner, and I had the TV on, and I can't remember if it was a show or the news or something, but there was um, or a commercial. Like anyway, was, something was on, and it had gunfire, and um, you started saying "hurt, hurt, hurt" about the TV. Actually, that's just you, hearing it. That yeah, wasn't that's even... just hearing it. You've never seen that. You don't have any understanding of what gunfire is or what a gun is or anything. But you just instinctively knew that. One of the first things um, I think you ever watched TV, because you didn't see any TV your first year of life at all, and very little your second year. But um, uh, towards, you know, as we got closer to your birthday, we started watching a little bit more. Um, but I, I had America's Funniest Home Videos on or something, which shows just videos of of, of people being silly and sometimes falling on a skateboard or a bicycle and um, you couldn't watch it and just watching it you go no 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 and you start crying and I couldn't figure out what it was and it was it was the show I believe God has gifted you with a heart that will connect with others and I pray for that heart and I can't wait to see how this develops in you and what this might develop into but it is so much fun, Michael, to watch you grow and watch you change and, and mature before our very eyes. You are a fun child. You are a happy child. People comment about it all the time. You are uh, a well-behaved child. And it is a joy and pleasure to be your parents. We are so proud that we get to, to be your parents and we get to raise you. And you bring so much love and joy to our lives. It is impossible to communicate how much we love you and how much we enjoy uh, being your mom and dad. I want to add one more thing. This one is the last thing. thing. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Because I'm hoping that um, it, it will make this video. You <laughs> say happy like all the time. Oh, yeah. And, um, and so, therefore, a few weeks, 
um, when you would wake up in the morning, you would just stay in your crib and be like, happy, 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 happy. Uh, and then and one morning I thought, you know, what, I'm going to record this. And so I stood outside of your room and uh, recorded you saying happy, happy, happy. And so now as you you know, as you mature, you're starting to look at us and, and you're asking the question, happy? Yeah. And, and um, so I think that that's pretty cool because other than the word no, happy is, is the word that you say most frequently. Yeah. So that, yeah, I just wanted to get that happy, in there. Happy for you means a lot of things we believe. We think yeah. it means just like you're happy, but you're also peaceful, peaceful mm-hmm. more peaceful. I like yeah. your mom was just saying, You'll you'll say happy. And at first, I thought you were just saying happy, happy, you know, just all the time. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, but you'll also come to us and you'll look at us and you'll say happy, and we've come to understand that you're asking us if we're happy. And and then we'll go yes, Michael, we're happy. And then he you'll look back at us and you'll go smile and go happy, like you're telling us I'm happy too, and it's just really sweet. It is. We hope it continues um, into <laughs> into your three and your teenage years. Yes. So, Michael, we we go to get your picture made with Santa, which we're not really quite sure if you're going to like Santa or not. And if memory you serves did not, me correctly, yeah, you, you like did not like Santa. Uh, your one, yeah. Mm. But anyway, um, so we're at the Chattanooga Choo Choo, which you love choo choos, and I thought I'll just walk around with you and. And they have this little merry-go-round with the horses. You put a quarter in and, and you ride around. And so I thought, this will be so cute. You want to ride this and you're excited about it. So I stick you on it and tell you to hold on. I put the quarter in. I get the phone up. And, yeah, this is what happens. Um, you fall off almost immediately. I felt really bad. I stopped recording. A lot of people said I should have recorded about three more seconds longer. Uh, but I immediately grabbed you. But the most hilarious part of that video is the um, if you listen to the uh, the announcer as the as the ride is about to start, the announcer gives some kind of warning about watching your children and making sure they don't fall off. And well, about I was that time, you. yeah, he was watching you. He was watching you fall off. Yeah, it's just and it's funny. really bad. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. there. I was waiting in line for Santa. Yeah. Yeah. You love for me to throw you in the air and body slams. Body slams is when I put my hand on your chest and hold you up and then flip you over and kind of slam you on the bed. Those are things that daddies do that mommies don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you love trains and we, uh, we, we see the trains a lot and you love dirt. Love, love dirt. dirt. Oh my goodness, you love dirt. And so, yeah, we've gone to some construction sites and we just sit there and, um, and, and one time we did get out and we got to watch the bulldozers and everything really close up. So that was, that was pretty cool. And, um, but yeah, our, our, our main goal is just getting you out in the mornings and making sure you run and ex- yep. expend a lot of energy. But yeah, trains, trains are a big deal. You, your, your second birthday party was all about trains. So, but now I think we're moving to dirt. Yep. Okay. 